is about uh, theories of corporate governance and uh, mainly it is about uh, why corporations should be moral. We know that uh, individuals should be moral, but why corporations should be moral or is there any need for corporations? Because, you know, uh, there, there is law and law regulates the corporations. So, so if there is law, full-fledged laws are available to, to regulate to regulate the corporations in the presence of law why there is a need to discuss this this uh, morality or responsibility for the corporations so this is this is very interesting question that uh, that if we have laws if we have rules and regulations written in white and black also our legal system is functioning very well then why do we need morality and responsibility for corporations so i think that it is not law which is running the morality, it is actually morality which runs the law and, uh, and the reason is that uh, if there is no morality, legal system will not work. Uh, for example, just imagine that uh, if you are not a moral person, if there is no morality in you, there will be, there will be so many accidents because you need so many police inspectors or traffic wardens on each signal. Yes, to control the attitudes of individuals. So there is morality or a, a more personalized example that, uh, that I am very tolerant to, towards the attendance and the behavior of students, not many expectations. And you can come and you can do your attendance and you can go and you have fulfilled your legal obligation. But still many of you are sitting here, it means that there is morality inside you and you think that you are here to study, okay? So the point which I am trying to make is that it is not law which runs the morality, it is morality inside us which is running the law. So today we will see that why we need corporations to be moral and more important why we need them to be responsible. And we also try to define something which is which is very important called as corporate social responsibility. I am sure that many of you might have heard about corporate social responsibility. Uh, many universities are offering full-fledged programs like masters in corporate social responsibility or MBA in corporate social responsibility. So we'll, we will look into it. What is corporate social responsibility? So in very simple words, corporate social responsibility is that the companies should do something good for the society. This is corporate social responsibility. Companies should do something good for the society. Corporate social responsibility. We will also try to discuss this theory, very important theory, stakeholder theory. So company has so many stakeholders, so many people are attached to this company. So how the company should behave in the presence of so many stakeholders. And then we will try to define what is corporate accountability, which means if companies are responsible and if they are not responsible, they should be accountable as well. And finally, we will discuss about corporate citizenship. The idea is that as we, the human, are citizens, companies should also behave as a citizen. Means we, as a citizen of the country, try to fulfill the demands of society. Similarly, we expect the companies to behave like a citizen, a responsible citizen, and behave and fulfill the demands of the society. So a very fundamental question is, which lots of groups asked me yesterday, that what is the difference between theory, philosophy and ideology and, and uh, you know, to be very frank, I also didn't think about, about this, this question coming from the auditorium. So there is a big difference between theory, philosophy and ideology. Theory is directed. Theory is about a specific topic. So you have economic theories, financial theories, political theories, psychological theories. So theory is directed. Theory is about a specific topic. Okay. And when we talk about philosophy, what is philosophy? Everyone is philosopher. You may have your philosophy. I have my philosophy. You can be agree with my philosophy. Whatever you think, whatever you are trying to think, it is your philosophy. Okay. So philosophy is very simple, all of us are philosophers. And what is ideology? Ideology is a little bit sensitive topic. So what is ideology? Ideology is that when you propose a philosophy, 
and then you want people to follow your philosophy. It becomes ideology. Okay. So once again, what is theory? Theory is about a specific topic. Philosophy. Philosophy is simple. Everyone has its own philosophy. And ideology is when someone asks people to follow its ideology. For example, Lenin. Or even before that, you can go uh, and talk about Marxism. So Marxism is an ideology. The person who proposed the philosophy, communist philosophy, then he asked people to follow. And there are so many people who actually try to enforce the ideology of Karl Marx. Yes. So I think that now you have understood the difference between between theory, philosophy, and ideology. These are completely different things. Okay. So sometimes you can see that these questions are very simple and we simply don't pay attention on them. Uh, what is your major? What are you studying? Marketing. Oh, marketing. marketing and management, yes. And what is the difference between marketing and advertisement? What is the difference? You can do marketing before designing your product. Yes. When it comes to advertisement, you just sell. <coughs> So see, these questions are very simple, but usually we don't pay attention attention on them. <laughs> when when I was in college, I just remembered I uh, uh, I I was studying finance, and I was very you know uh, very history student. Like everything is on my fingertips. <laughs> let him let him ask me any question. And in the in the state exam, I was sitting in front of this examiner, and he asked me the first question that what is the difference between Finance, accounting, and uh, 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 the, the third one is uh, economics. Finance, accounting, and economics. Yes, and I, I was like shocked that oh, I, I never thought about this. Yes, but there is a huge difference between finance, accounting, and and economics. So we need to differentiate between theory, philosophy, and ideology. And we are discussing about theories today. We are discussing about theories related to corporations. And the next class we will be discussing about theories related to individuals. The first theory is. If you will go to the book, you will see they have dedicated a couple of couple of uh, pages to this theory. But I will try to make it very simple for you. The first theory is theory of social contract. So what is social contract? Social contract is that in the absence of government, when there was no government, we were living in the state of nature. The so state of nature was state of chaos. So state of nature was. When there was no government, people were fighting with each other, and then we decided to make peace. So, in order to make peace, what what we thought, people selected certain people among themselves. They said that, okay, you are our leaders. We give you the right to rule over us. You can be our leaders, and in return, make sure that you take care of our rights. So, what are our rights? What we need? We need food, shelter, clothing. Yes, life, liberty, freedom, human rights. So once again, in the state of nature, when there was no government, we decided to make a government. And how we made the government? We selected certain people among ourselves. We said them, "You are our leader. We give you the luxury to sit in Ali Majlis and and travel on cool cars. But in return, what you have to do? Make sure that we are getting our food, clothing, shelter, life, liberty, freedom, and human rights." Okay. So we made a contract among ourselves. This is social contract theory. Before I project it to the business, let me show you this this. Uh, Diagram, and it will be more clear that we, the people, select by giving power to executive and judges, and in return, we expect them to take care of our life, liberty, and property, or you can say that food, shelter, and clothing, human rights, and and we we you know can project this to the democracy as well. So, who are the democratic elected people? These are ordinary people like you and me. Yes. So these are the people who say that okay, we select you as a leader. We give you vote. You are our leader. We give you the luxuries, but in return, take care of our rights as well. So this is a social contract between the individuals. So what in the sense of business? Social contract in business is that we say to the big corporations that okay, your business you want to make profit, we give you the right to make profit, make money. But in return, take care of the society as well. Okay, so you want to do business, you want to make money, you want to make profit. Okay, please make profit, but in return, take care of the society as well. This is the social contract with the corporations. 
Now when I am talking about social contract with the corporations, I am not talking about ordinary employees who are working in the corporations. I am talking about the leadership, the members of board of directors, the investors, the boss, yes? Because ordinary people are like you and me. They are also suffering because in the last lecture we discussed about labor rights violation as well, yes? So when we say that a contract of society with the corporation, we are mainly concerned about the contract with the leadership, which is called as board. So board or members of board of directors, these are the, these are the people who have decision making powers, okay? So very quickly, I will discuss about some of the very first boards. Some of the very first boards were in UK. Uh, the example can be quoted as this company, which is called as East India Trading Company. Those of you who have interest in history, they know that uh, East India Trading Company was the flagship company of uh, the United Kingdom at that time. They were doing business in uh, in uh, India and uh, you know all the countries in South China Sea and Africa and making a lot of profit because they were buying and selling goods from the Indian subcontinent and bringing it to the UK. Uh, they were you know gathering slaves from Africa and sending them to America. And uh, this is a period of uh, when the UK is booming, you know, Victorian era construction and then the industrial revolution came. I, 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 know, I know that you know about these things. So a lot of people invested money into the East India Company because it was a very profitable business. Okay? And of course it was very profitable business and then something very interesting is going to happen. So these two people which you can see here. The lady on this side, her name is Zebunisa. She was a princess, princess. and uh, the person which you can see here, his name is Aurangzeb. And Aurangzeb was the son of Shah Jahan. Shah Jahan was the son of Akbar. Akbar was the son of Amayu. Amayu was the son of Babur. And Babur was the son of Amir Temur. Yes. Oh, <laughs> that's Very, very cool, cool dynasty. So Aurangzeb, Aurangzeb was uh, a king and the Zebunisa was very intelligent lady and she was not only the daughter but also was the advisor of, of the Aurangzeb and, uh, and she was also a poetess and um, you know uh, her, her book is published very recently in 2002 when they collected the manuscripts. So this lady was giving political advices to the Aurangzeb and then what happened one day the princess was walking in her palace wearing a very delicate cloth and, and we know that at that time there was no electricity and we had these charms, yes. So she got fired and she burned and then, then it was a chaotic situation of course because she was not only the daughter of the king but also she was the counsellor of the, of the king and he invited everyone from all over the subcontinent to treat the princess and all of these doctors and tabibs were, were failed to treat the lady and, and then he was really worried. Then someone told, then someone told to the king that there are white peoples, they have recently started trading with India. So they are coming from UK and, and these people have very good doctors. So please call a doctor from these white people. So he, he, he called a doctor from Britishers. His name was Dr. Jibril. Very easy to remember Jibril. And, and he came and he treated the princes and princes became fine. And then something very interesting happened. Very interesting, a turning point in the history of mankind. The king became very happy and as the king said, he said to the doctor, ask me what you want. Yes, please ask me and you are whatever you want. And you know, this Dr. Jibril, he could say that give me, give me the green card and uh, I will move to the America or give me two million dollars and I want to retire in UK. But he didn't do this. What he said, very interesting point that this, this doctor said to the king that, that give me the license, trading rights, tax free trading rights for East India Company. We will do trade with India. Ladies and gentlemen, this was the decision which changed the course of 
my history at least yes because for couple of hundred years britishers they were like home sweet home in india <laughs> and robbing and taking back all the money so the point which i am trying to make is that this person dr jibril he was at that time in a position to say to the king that give me something which is very important for me and he could set his life but he looked for a greater benefit and he sacrificed his personal benefits for the benefits of the company and in the long run we know that it brought greater benefit not only for doctor but for the company and but for the uk so this type of attitude when the individual sacrifices his personal benefits for the benefits of the company we call it stewardship theory stewardship theory okay. so the stewardship theory says that if there is a chance for you to argue that which one is important for me my company my university my family and myself if you are thinking about getting something for yourself think twice because uh, thinking about the greater benefit will bring you benefit ultimately yes because the magnitude will be higher if you will include more people into your decision so this is called as stewardship theory okay so we will discuss about that as well and then they passed certain laws in uk and uh, of course it was a great opposition in india as well that aurangzeb had previously bad experience with the danish portuguese and spanish who were coming to india and robbing the country the politicians were against but aurangzeb had already promised to the doctor and he said that okay now it's done and he also passed a decree and then the east india company uh, you know they also were able to legalize their business and then we know that india became the headquarter of british trade and then they started you know looting all, all over the world by using this very very important base so the question is what is corporation the corporation is a company or business which have legal status you can have a very big business you can have a very big logistic business or cryptocurrency <laughs> these are the favorite business of mba students yes i have a big logistic business <laughs> so you can have a big business but until unless you don't have a legal status uh, we will not call call this business as a corporation okay so legal status is very important and then this business is an artificial personality we all know that uh, my business is separate from from myself so i am a natural person physical person and my business is artificial personality physically lisa and juridically lisa you know about them yes so your business is different from your personality and corporations are owned by the shareholders but exist independently what does it mean it's mean that even though i am the biggest investor even though i have 90% investment in in the business but corporation is separate it does not mean that i can go to the to the office and i can grab all the laptops and i can ask them to you know bring this furniture back to my home no it is not like this even though i am the biggest investor but still this is the company's property okay so this is the idea behind this and managers and directors have a fiduciary duty ladies and gentlemen fiduciary duty one duty is called as legal duty legal duty means by law you have to do something fiduciary duty is your moral duty yes for example university pays me for the lecture but it is my fiduciary duty to open the door and after the lecture shut the door and give the keys back okay for which they don't pay me so so legal duties and fiduciary duties fiduciary duties are the moral duties ladies and gentlemen okay so so the question is can a corporation have social responsibility can a corporation have social responsibility so without reading what is written here i think that the corporation should have a legal responsibility because individuals as persons have responsibilities towards the society so we natural persons have responsibility towards the society so businesses are artificial persons they should also have you know responsibility towards the society okay and this is a very interesting case recently it happened i am sure that you might have seen it floating on social media so summary is that uh, the kit kat kit kat was collecting the cocas for making chocolate from the jungle which was the natural habitat of orangutans or the monkeys 
and there were environmental activists who protested against this and said that this is something which is very very wrong because these animals have a kind of social contract with us means these animals animals also provide us what they provide us meat or maybe milk or eggs and in return we should you know provide them at least security and whatever you are doing it is it is against the ethical values and you should stop so i think that it is a very good example that we are living in an ecosystem and we have so many social contracts not only with the corporations or, or individuals among ourselves but we have a social contract with the environment and if a company is destroying the environment we can make him liable socially liable and if a company is making a product which is harmful for the society so we can also ask him to keep, to stop or if a company is destroying our natural habitat or ecosystem then also i think that we should make him responsible because natural habitat everything is connected and if you will destroy the jungle it is going to lead to the other issues such as climate change deforestation or or other environmental disasters okay so <clears throat> can a corporation be morally responsible for its action yes it should be and the reasons i have mentioned earlier one more example to to support my argument one more example and then i will move on to the next question the 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 labels which you can see here this is this is a beer its name was uh, bad bad frog beer so since 1992 they were working everything is fine high quality beer competitor comes they cannot compete they cannot compete with the beer because uh, you know uh, the quality is very high everything is perfect they couldn't find anything to compete with the with the beer company okay so very interesting point ladies and gentlemen pay attention what happens the competitors competitors made an argument they say look at look at the picture if you focus on the frog frog is showing his middle finger did you notice so so they said that they said that very important point ladies and gentlemen they said that this advertisement is not socially responsible this is morally wrong because you know how you can put these pictures everywhere yes where this frog is doing this this offensive gesture did you get the point so so the point which i am trying to make is that if companies for the sake of business or profit can use social responsibility as an argument yes so they had no other argument besides saying that this business is not socially responsible so they use this argument to to you know uh, do anti marketing of of their competitors so if they can use social responsibility as an argument as an argument against other businesses why not we should use social responsibility as an argument to make them responsible towards the society okay because businesses use social responsibility as an argument for competing among themselves we can also use social responsibility as an argument okay so there are two types of theories related to morality and first set of theory is called as positive theories so positive theory is the other name of positive theory is legal theories so positive theories are value free theory value free theory value free theory means there is no morality in them for example law says that this is right or this is wrong and most of the time there is no moral argument yes for example for example you can go and you can see so many laws are popping up and you don't find any logic behind them don't find a moral argument why it is right or why it is wrong yes so these types of theories they are called as positive theories or legal theories when there is no morality involved by law it is right or wrong okay and and then there are other set of theories which are called as normative theories normative theories are those theories where there is morality so on the moral ground we can say that this is right or this is wrong okay so the next theory is agency theory the first one was social contract the second one is agency theory okay so agency theory you can read in the book i will try to explain in simple words what does it mean by agency theory agency theory says that all of us are agents all of us are agents of a principle 
For example, your father asks you to go and buy a car. So your father is principal, you are an agent. Tomorrow, if I don't come into the class, I will send my assistant. So my assistant is my agent, I am the principal, okay? So I am the investor and you are the manager. So I am the principal, you are my agent because I am investing money in your business, okay? So this is the relationship between principal and agent. Agency theory says that principal has some responsibilities. So what are the responsibilities of principal? If I have a business, I am principal, I am investor, I have some responsibilities, okay? So what are my responsibilities? My responsibilities are, I should pay salary on time. I should give the deserving salary. I should take care of working hours. There should be no discrimination. I should take care of the health and occupational health of the people who are working in the company. It is my responsibility as a principal. So agent, what are his responsibilities? Agent's responsibility is to try to give his maximum, come on time, do the job before the deadline or meet the deadlines and never think that, never think that he is more important than principal, okay? So these are the responsibilities and rights of principal and agent. Sometimes it happens that the agent or the worker Nimamotu. Sit in the corner. Okay? I told you in the first lecture also that you know you, you can talk, but I shouldn't be looking at you because it, it disturbs me. Yes? And I forget. And, and, and so many things are going on in my mind, and then I lose the chain of arguments. Yes? <laughs> so the principal agent, sometimes it happens that agent, agent start thinking that he is principal. For example, I am working in the university for 15 years. If I will leave the university, university will close. This type of thoughts, yes? I am working in the business for 30 years. I am the, I am the most skilled employee. If I will leave, the business will collapse. These types of thoughts come, come in the mind of agent. This is called as agency problem, okay? So when the agency problem comes, Agency problem comes because of the moral attitude of agent. So, so once again, once again, principal agent. Principal is who is the boss. Agent is who is working for the principal. And sometimes it happens that this agent start thinking that I am more important than the principal. Okay. So this is called as agency problem. Agency theory says that the good agent, good agent should avoid this agency problem. Okay. And why this agency problem comes because of these things, I am sure in marketing and in finance you have you have uh, read about these terminologies, yes? What you know about uh, X inefficiency and transactional cost, yes? These are introduction to finance or introduction to economics, no? Yes or no? If no, then I will explain. If yes, then I will move on, no? So, satisficing in, in non-economics terminologies, satisficing is you should do what is minimum requirement to complete the task. For example, how many marks you need to pass this course? Which percentage you need? 60 or 40? 40. So, you work only to get 40 marks. Okay. This is called as satisficing. So, meeting the minimum requirement is called as satisficing. A person comes at job and does minimum what is required to do. For example, all of these civil servants and bureaucrats, you can go in any state department, they are looking at their watches and when there is 5 o'clock, they will just leave because they are there to meet the minimum work requirement. Okay? So satisficing is when you try to meet the minimum requirements. This is called as satisficing. X in efficiency is that there is an ideal curve so you draw an other curve parallel to this, okay? So in non-statistical terminology, you can say that you have options, good and perfect, and you will go for good. For example, you go to Kuzinka, you go to Makro, there are products which are very expensive in very high quality, but you don't buy them. You will buy a good product in normal amount of money, yes? 
so this is this is the behavior which is called as x in efficiency that you don't go for perfection you go for just good okay why the why we need 90 marks yes 70 marks are already much better than 40 percent yes this type of scenario and uh, con uh, conglomerate firms are the holdings very big corporations which have so many businesses so what happens that the businesses have so many small small businesses and principal don't pay attention on all the businesses and these agents they know that he has so much work to do so that's why they simply ignore our job yes this is the problem with agency and the final transactional cost Khatiabar you should know about transactional cost yes transactional cost is that when we want to manufacture something it has so many steps. For example, I want to manufacture mobile phone. So for manufacturing mobile phone, what I will do? I will buy the raw material. I will bring it to the factory, mold it, make mobile phone, pack it, deliver it, logistic companies. Yes. So there are so many steps. All of these steps, they are handled by agents. And they know that, they know that principal is not paying attention on each of the step. And that's why they don't do their job. If the transaction cost will be very high, product will be very expensive. If the transaction cost will be low, product will be cheaper. Okay. So the point is that because of these problems, sometimes agents don't work. Or the agents start thinking that principal is ignoring them. This is the agency problem. Okay, ladies and gentlemen. Once again, so principal hires the agent. Principal hire the agent and agent perform duties on the behalf of principal but sometimes it happens sometimes it happens that this agent start thinking that i am very important for the principal if i will not work or if i will do less work principal will not know or the business will collapse this is called as agency theory agency theory says that principal and agent have their rights and responsibilities and they should they should fulfill their rights and responsibilities and they should avoid the agency problems. Did you understand the agency theory? Yes. If you didn't, then I will try to explain it more. But hmm? okay. in future, no one will explain you more. agency theory. You will never study it. Did you understand? Yes. Okay, good. So, so, uh, and agency problem you have understood, yes? So agency problem is, that agency problem like this. I have been raising this cattle on this land for 50 years. So it's okay to say that this land belongs to me. No, but this land belongs to the principal. You are just using this, this land. Okay. So one more case and then I will move to the next theory. Very interesting case to explain you the principal agent relationship. In subcontinent, when the Britishers came, they needed horses, they needed horses, you know, uh, army needs horses. So the soldiers were unable to raise the horses. So what they would do, they would find a farmer, give him a land, a piece of land, and they will say to him, you can use this land, you can cultivate it, you can ra raise, you know, your rice or, or wheat or grains, whatever you want, you can do on this. But the money which you will make from this land, you should spend some money on the horse and take care of the horse. Okay. And then when the horse will be old enough, we will come take, take the horse and give you a new horse. Okay. So you can use this land on the name of horse. So legally speaking in the documents, this land belonged to the horse. And who was the owner? Horse was the owner of the land. And who was the agent? This farmer was the agent. So farmer, farmer was the servant of the horse. And farmer knew that if the horse will die, I will die because they will take the land and my kids will die. Yes. So, so very, very interesting, I think, scenario when apparently the principal seems a very unimportant person. Yes. But he has very uh, powerful status in the case of horse. Horse is the landowner and the farmer is the servant of the horse. So this is about principal agent. Yes, uh, I hope you understood this. No, no, or yes. Okay. So before I go to this this theory, next stewardship theory, I I just uh, remembered about one incident. 
Couple of years ago, I was working, I was working as an assistant director of a company which used to import uh, Japanese cars. So, by nature, I had a attitude that I would do lunch with all of my colleagues at same same time at two o'clock, and uh, everyone will come, our driver, our secretaries, peers, the the car washing guys, uh, everyone will come, and we will sit on one table, and we will have our lunch. And my philosophy was that that uh, uh, if uh, we will not do lunch at the same time, they will go and they will do lunch in their free time and sometimes they will uh, be late and you know there will be destruction for the work. So it is better we do lunch together and, and uh, we finish the lunch. So my boss who was Japanese Pakistani, he came and, uh, and he looked into the scenario and he said that it is very good that you do lunch together. Uh, I, I, I like the attitude towards your employees, but uh, Mr. Mar, it will be better if you will do your lunch in your office. Because these people, they are the servant and you are the boss and don't be free with them. Because tomorrow, they will start giving you advices. They will start saying that, oh, Mr. Amar, we, we eat together, we drink together, we dance together, yes. Or he will come and he will say, Mr. Amar, give me the loan or give me the car or you are my friend. You know, we are breaking the flame together. These types of things, yes. You understood the point, okay. So he said that it is very good that you have a good attitude towards them. But keep them in their limits because it is it is going to cause a problem for our business in the long run. And I think that from legal point of view, without thinking about my my morality, it was a very good advice. Yes. So this is the principal agent relationship that my responsibilities as a principal towards these people are that I should pay them salary on time, take care of their health. If they need holidays, give them holidays. But if they start thinking that they are the boss or they can give me advice, then it is going to be an agency problem. Okay. So the next theory is next theory is stewardship theory, which I told you in the beginning, Dr. Jibreel. So what does the stewardship theory says? Stewardship theory says that if you have a chance, if you have a chance to prioritize the company's interests, do this. If you have to sacrifice your individual interests, do this. Because the company interests will bring you the greater benefit in the long run. Okay, so this is the stewardship theory. In the beginning, I already explained you. You can compare the agency theory with stewardship theory in your free time. The next theory is embeddedness theory, ladies and gentlemen. Embeddedness theory. What does it mean by embedded? Embedded. Embedded means attached. Embedded means soaked. Embedded. Uh, the girls may know embroidery. Embroidery. Yes, on the clothes you. You make designs with the with the threads. Yes, this is called as embroidery. So embeddedness theory says, embeddedness theory says that you should have good relations with everyone. You should have good relations with everyone and use these relations time to time for the benefit of your business. Okay. So if you are a corporation, you should have good relations with everyone and use these relations time to time for the benefit of your business. This is the embeddedness theory. You should be embedded in the society. You should have good marketing and networking. You should make friends and use these relationships time to time for the benefits of your company, for your business, okay? Did you understand embeddedness theory? Hmm? Yes. So embeddedness theory is Tanish Village. Tanish Village. You should have Tanish Village. Tarnish village with everyone. Tarnish village or, or, or uh, in Russian it is called as um, Barak, yes? Or in Chinese it is called as Gonzi. Gonzi, Gonzi means yeah, that before doing business, you should invite them for massage, for a restaurant, yes? Go to the mountain with them and make them, you know, trustworthy. And after that, do business with them. So, embeddedness theory says that you should have Tarnish village everywhere. Everywhere, yes? and use this Tanish village for the benefit of your business, okay? So this is embeddedness, embeddedness theory, okay? So, so you should make friends, corporations should make friends and use these relations time to time for the benefit of their business, okay? So now I think you will not forget about this. Uh, then, ladies and gentlemen, we are going to talk about the corporate social responsibility, but before that, let's 
let's repeat four theories social contract theory agency theory stewardship theory and embeddedness theory as yes, four theories we have covered now the social social responsibility corporate social responsibility there is a bookish definition also oxford definition i will go toward it but in very simple word what is corporate social responsibility corporate social responsibility is that the companies should do something good for the society very simple word companies should do something good for the society this is corporate social responsibility if you see that company is exploiting the labor no matter they are giving so many charities no matter they are giving scholarship opening hospitals schools and colleges for invalid people or the people without parents but they are exploiting their labor it means that they are not socially responsible okay no matter how much charity they are doing but if they are exploiting their labor it means that they are not socially responsible if you see a company using so many coffee cups or so many plastic bottles or or you know dumping their garbage into the river it means that they are not socially responsible companies because they are ignoring the environment or if you see that there is gender discrimination salaries are of females are less than the salaries of males or uh, you know vulnerable people are unable to get a job there and their campus for example mdis campus is not friendly for differently abled people you know that there is there is no no uh, uh, no mechanism for differently abled or you call them invalid people yes there is no support for them so it's mean that it is a violation of human rights and the company is not socially responsible and this is very important very important poverty elevation so poverty elevation if you see that company is not providing jobs let me explain it let me elaborate it a little bit we know that all the governments invite investment international investors should come opening business yes but we all know that these investors will come and they will make money take dollar out of the country yes because investors will not come for for gagakwari dilni dila they will come to make money and they come and make money but still government want more investors to come because of this reason that this investor will come he will create jobs for the local community as for a couple of years there will be jobs because government is not in a position to provide employment for all the unemployed people okay so if you see a company is coming but not creating job it's mean that this company is not socially responsible okay so these are some of the points you should keep in mind you can use it as an x ray to see if the company is socially responsible or not why a company should be responsible matlab mat i am listening why a company should be socially responsible there are moral reasons and there are business reasons why a company should be responsible moral reasons i have explained you already as yes? so many moral reasons business reasons so when a company becomes socially responsible there are businesses or there are profits which will return to the company for example let's take the example of mdis or let's not take the example of mdis yes they will throw me out so let's take the example of any any other university so what they do they go to the mahallas and they distribute food packets to the poor people yes or on the saturday they ask the student and faculty to come and clean you know in front of this so it is good and then what they do they take photos and put it on instagram and social media yes so i am not going to judge i am not going to judge i have my own convictions you have your own but this attitude will bring the business to the company yes people will see oh very good business yes oh very good people who who clean the environment and clean clean the you know roads and they give to charity uh, so the business reason means when a company does these types of things ultimately they get their money back because it is a kind of marketing for them did you understand it is right or wrong it is morally good or bad it is up to you you, you can decide okay but uh, uh, as we have heard that if you do charity with right hand your left hand should not about know about this yes these sort of things we have heard so the point is that 
corporate social responsibility is not only for the moral benefits corporate social responsibility will also bring monetized benefit to the business as well okay so very quickly i know that you hate philosophy and sociology <laughs> and your teacher uh, victoria she is phd in social philosophy yes <laughs> so so a little bit sociology maslow's hierarchy of need i am sure that you have heard about maslow's hierarchy of need did you see this somewhere Did you see? Yes. Oh, good. So Maslow's hierarchy of need. Be very attentive to this. Maslow's hierarchy of need says that we human have certain demands at different levels. Our basic demands are food, shelter, clothing. Yes. So when we have food, shelter, clothing, then I want to be the member of society. And in the society, I need safety. And in the society, I also need a family. When I have a family, I need business. I I will become rich. When I will become rich, I need attention. for attention what i will need i need a good social status i need a leadership position then i will i will like to become an oligarch and when i am oligarch i will like to become a dictator this is the maslow's hierarchy of need okay so i will project this maslow's hierarchy of need to the to the hierarchy of expectations of the corporation but before that the bookish definition of corporate social responsibility so the corporate social responsibility corporate social responsibility is the attempt by companies to meet the economic legal ethical and philanthropic demands of the given society at a particular point of time so in simple words how you will summarize it that we want companies to do something good for the society this is the simplest definition the bookish definition is this one so if you look at this pyramid and our our maslow's hierarchy for the sake of comparison what we what we want we want we as a society want that companies should at least fulfill their economic responsibilities what does it mean company should create jobs company should pay on time company should have good salary these are all economic responsibilities towards society so we expect that company should at least fulfill their economic responsibility this is the requirement by society then we want that companies should fulfill their legal responsibilities so what are the legal responsibilities of the company company should pay tax for example it is the legal responsibility okay so if they will pay tax this money will be spent for the society so our second requirement is our legal responsibility legal responsibility is to pay tax and then there is ethical responsibility ethical responsibility is expected by the society but it is not required what is the ethical responsibility ethical responsibility is company should do charity company can do charity if they like but it is not requirement it is expected yes it is expected that they should do charity and philanthropic responsibility philanthropic responsibility means that we expect the companies to work on not for profit basis that company should do business but not for profit this is their philanthropic responsibility and this is desired by the society it is not required by the society so many businesses they are philanthropic businesses which is very good but but not many businesses are motivated to that level that they work for not for profit all of these big uh, businessmen for example bill gates he is a computer person at the same time he has uh, bill gates foundation yes which does charity and vaccine program and education and and so on okay so this uh, you will read it in the book extensively it is mentioned but i hope that i delivered the message okay so <clears throat> there are corporate social responsibility strategies which are adopted by the company traditional strategies i told you already pay salary on time take care of environment don't violate human rights and do good for the labor create jobs opportunities and other contemporary social responsibilities contemporary means the new attitude of the companies so what can be a good example of contemporary social responsibility uh, for example data handling data is a new topic so if a company is handling your personal data in a careful manner we will say that it is becoming socially responsible yes i use a messenger wechat which is chinese messenger i i hope you also some of you use yes like telegram or 
or WhatsApp, this is WeChat for Chinese. Uh, so many times it happens that whenever there is an update, WeChat will ask you that do you want to do this app update? If you don't want this update, you can download your data and you can leave the application. Okay? So they give you a choice that if you don't want to agree with the terms and conditions, if you don't accept this update, you can simply download your data and you can leave the application. Just compare it with the other companies, for example, Google Play Store's application or iTunes applications. They never give you a choice to leave the application. That's, they will come, they will say there is update, you should do this update. Yes, did you notice this thing? So very less applications give you a choice that you can download the data if you are not agree with terms and condition and you can leave the, the program you, if you don't want to use. Yes, these are some of the contemporary corporate social responsibility examples that companies are becoming more and more responsible towards the usage and the storage and monetizing and marketing and handling of the data. So ladies and gentlemen, there are social policies, social programs and social impacts as an outcome of the corporate social responsibility. But before that, I want to talk about this very important theory, stakeholder theory, the fifth one. Social contract theory, agency theory, stewardship theory, embeddedness theory and the final one is stakeholder theory, fifth one. So stakeholder theory, without putting any burden on your nervous system, Let's come directly to this slide. So the stakeholder theory says that the company has so many stakeholders. Companies have so many stakeholders and the company usually prioritize these stakeholders. For example, which of these stakeholders is very important for the company? What do you think? Which of the stakeholders is the most important stakeholder? Don't ask us questions, yes. Me. So employees are important for the company or not? Important, yes, very important. So suppliers are important, customers are important, yes. So these are very important stakeholders of the company. Stakeholder theory says that when you are paying attention on your important stakeholders, don't ignore your unimportant stakeholders. Okay, so when you are paying attention on your important stakeholders, don't ignore your less important stakeholders. So who are the less important stakeholders? For example, uh, media, media is not written here. Media is also a stakeholder, you are marketing people. So media is a stakeholder of the company. Company should not ignore the media, give them some business, give them marketing opportunities because they will return this back to you, yes? And if you will not give them business and tomorrow there will be a news against your company, they will put this news. But if you are giving them some business, before putting a negative news, they will think that they are our friends, yes? So similarly, students are the civil society. So what happens? Students are also a less important stakeholder of the company. Company should sometime, time to time, come to the MDIS on the open house and you know put their stalls and give them small small uh, you know brochures and give them internships and students will make a positive image of the company and in the long run this will benefit you student when he will be in a good position will think that this company was very good they gave us gifts or they give us scholarship or they gave us uh, you know some sort of internship opportunities so stakeholder theory once again what does it mean by stakeholder theory? Stakeholder theory says that you have stakeholders which are very important. Pay attention on them. But when you are paying attention on the important stakeholders, don't ignore the less important stakeholders. This is the stakeholder stakeholder theory, okay? And now I will I will quickly go to this this theory which is about individual being a stakeholder, okay? So so this is this is a very important and very delicate point, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, it is not mentioned anywhere, and I wrote a paper paper about about this. It, so I think that the individuals are also very important stakeholder of the corporation. And and after this example, you will you will tell me 
that it is morally and socially acceptable and responsibility in terms of your ethical standards okay so this person uh, has a company which is called as Lubiton. I don't know what is the original pro the pronunciation, but for me, Lubiton is easy to memorize because it is very close to Louis Vuitton, which is another company. Okay, so Lubiton, and if you go on YouTube and look look in his video, uh, they manufacture the ladies' shoes which have red colors, red colors in their um, what you call it, bottom or what? Heels. No, heel is only this. This, this one. What you say it in English, okay? So there is red color, okay? <laughs> there is red color. So this person says that one day I was sitting with my friend, female friend, and uh, and he took uh, he took his lipstick, her lipstick, sorry, and uh, he started painting the the shoes of this lady as as a joke. And he thought that he thought that uh, this painting will make her uh, angry or as a joke, you know. So when the lady looked at the shoes, she actually liked this. Yes, she liked this red color. And then he patented this idea and he started manufacturing these shoes which have red bottom. And you can go on this website and you can see there are shoes which cost two thousand euros, three thousand euros. Yes, and and very expensive shoes. The only good thing about them is, or what you call in Russian, the fishka. Fishka is that they have the red, red color bottom. Yes, this is the only important thing, but very expensive. Now, the customers are increasing because girls are demanding. And, and the philosophy, underlying philosophy behind the patent of these shoes is this, that red is hotter than black. In certain cultures, for example, girls, they, they wear this uh, design, the red design on their palms of hand and the palms of their their feet, yes? And this is called as Hina. And ladies and gentlemen, uh, especially the boys, the palms of the, of the girl or palms of the feet are highly personalized organs of the female, yes? You don't get much opportunities to see the palm of a, of a girl. So when a boy look at the red palm of the feet, the attraction level increase. So physiologically, male become more attracted towards female and girls know that, that when the boy will look at the bottom of the feet, red feet, he will be attracted towards me and, and that is the reason, that is the reason that, that uh, so many famous, you know, celebrities, they are using this brand and it is becoming very famous and, and making a lot of money. Ladies and gentlemen, the point which I am trying to make is, now you are very happy, yes? Rati, Veshi, you are very happy. You three of them. Four of them. Four of you. Yes. So, we have seen people intervening by using these physiological, biological and neurological processes. You have seen so many products are available. Businesses are making money on the name of using colors or yin and yang products or a billion dollar aroma industry is there. All of these companies, what they are doing actually, actually they are making money by using certain physiological, biological, neurological elements of human body. Very important point and then I will leave it here. Tell me, do you think that we should allow companies or let, let it make more more academic. Do you think that it is socially responsible attitude that we should allow businesses to intervene our bodies at physiological, psychological, neurological levels? So you can you can say yes or no, it is up to you. But my view is that it is a slippery slope, it is never going to an end. Because human body at biological level is very complex, so many chemical processes are going on inside our body and when you let companies start making money by manipulating and putting them into the guilt because your inner self is saying that you should buy this product or you should behave in a certain way, I think that there should be some, some sort of, if not legal, but moral check and balance. Because if we talk about legality, if we say about law, law is there, law will support them. Law will say, law will make special policies for them. 
but i think that at moral level there is a need to do some sort of intervention okay so i will i will now move it move to the to the next part which is which is corporate accountability so if the companies are responsible it is good companies are becoming responsible very well but if companies are not becoming responsible or if they are destroying or doing wrongs in the society then we should make them accountable this is called as corporate accountability the definition is corporate accountability refers to whether a corporation is answerable to some way for the consequences of its action so should we make them responsible the consequences of their actions should we make them responsible yes so yes we should make them responsible this is called as corporate accountability a very sensitive a very sensitive example i am going to show you yes and and you know after that i will ask you a question but but before that look look this video i will show you a little bit of this so what is happening here <laughs> what is happening here that uh, this this mother mother is wearing these augmented reality glasses and this korean company has organized a meeting in the virtual reality with the daughter who is dead so the daughter had passed away and the mother is now meeting with her daughter in the virtual reality everything is programmed codified and the gl the gloves which she is wearing you can see that she can even even touch the baby and the claim is that by using the 5d technology they can even introduce the aroma of the person into this reality so very sensitive thing yes i think and if a company starts making these types of uh, services that okay come we will organize a meeting of your dead ones with you yes many people will be happy let let me just uh, show you <coughs> the attitude of these this is a team this is a team yes so ladies and gentlemen i i took this example because as per my my morality i think that there should be a little bit of accountability if legally speaking you can argue legally speaking you can say that there are positive dimensions of this business as well to or by using augmented reality you can give lecture here while staying at your home or we can have virtual meetings and so on but when we start playing with the with the emotions or we we start playing with this point that by making you emotional or by using the cheap morality i will call it cheap morality you start making money and 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 the society start adopting this i think that there is a point there is a point that we should intervene yes or uh, or no it is up to you it is it is up to you yes or no it is up to you but uh, but uh, i think that i made my point clear that in terms of business in terms of law there is no problem there is no problem but in terms of uh, social responsibility or in terms of the morality of the individual manipulation with the with the sensitive topics like this i think that it requires some sort of accountability a couple of more examples before moving to the final topic these body parts buying and selling is is allowed in certain part of the world regulations are there and this is a good example why i quoted this example because morally morally we don't see any problem now yes we have adopted this so legally and morally in the beginning there were issues but now there is a moral adaptation we don't see any problem with buying and selling of these these body organs yes and 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 with the passage of time what is coming next uh, this is very interesting phenomena related to 3d printed body parts they can take a stem cell from your body make a full fledged organ like your kidney heart or even the blood is experimented and they can install it to the human body there are experiments related to this 
businesses all of them big corporations for example astrazeneca johnson and johnson i don't know about sputnik but uh, sinovac these vaccine companies have billion dollars r and d i'm not talking about millions but billion dollars r r and d investment in the in the 3d printed body organs and extreme of this is this this one example then i am going to move to the next topic the extreme is that in the future there will be businesses who will be offering you designer babies means you have a choice to choose the color of your baby's eyes the color of your baby's hair the intellect and height color of the skin at and if you say that it is shy fi or i am exaggerating i am a medical doctor i am not exaggerating certain things are already happening that during pregnancy they can check that if they have genetically genetic diseases like sickle cell anemia or down syndrome or some of the other diseases they can intervene so this is something something which is a paradigm shift in the in the in the medical sciences and companies will start making money the marketing wave will come in the beginning people will say no 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 it is wrong it is inter intervening into the into the deeds of the god but with the passage of time as we have started adopting the attitude towards these body parts like teeth or hair extension or or you know human organs we will also start adopting adopting this attitude towards these designer babies and and just imagine with this thought with this thought i am moving to the to the next topic with this thought just imagine that tomorrow all the rich people or let's say everyone everyone has designer baby and everyone is at same level of intellect same level of uh, physical appearance uh, there is no no diversity how how the world will work yes with this thought with this thought i am moving to the to the final topic just five just give me five minutes and then then you are free to go corporate citizenship in very simple words corporate citizenship is is uh, the idea that uh, as individuals are responsible citizens of the society corporations should also behave responsibly in the society because they are also the citizens of the society a couple of examples a couple of examples how the corporations are manipulating our interpersonal relations a couple of examples before concluding uh, you will go on a google scholar google scholar you can write smartphone and societal impact on the society you can you can you can write even in google that uh, societal impact of new innovation technology there are not 100 but thousands of academic studies which shows empirical data is available they show that these companies are doing this to put you in some sort of guilt yes that you should use the social media or the technology because it is directly impacting on your interpersonal relationship yes she is not my good friend because she looks my stories but she does not like my post so she is observing me but she is not like liking my post it's mean that she is spying on me these type of attitude is developing without any exaggeration so when the company is, is intervening in your interpersonal relationship which are impacting on your personal relationship they put you in a guilt that this life is very important for you or this life is the standard of being friend or or being an enemy or if, or being a completely ignorant person i think that i think that uh, there is something going wrong certain citizens means corporations are trying to set their own standards of citizenship ladies and gentlemen i hope i made this point clear and before you leave before you leave before you leave 2 minutes i know you hate me before you leave let's summarize corporate corporate social responsibility is that the companies should do something good for the society if they are not doing then they are corporate accountability we should make them accountable and corporate citizenship means that they are they are citizen as we are as we do good thing they should also do good thing this is about corporate social responsibility five theories five theories Two minutes, sabar, if possible. Two minutes. No, no sabar. Okay. <laughs> two, two minutes. Yes, two minutes. Yes. I I know for morning class is very difficult. So, but. so social contract theory. What is social contract theory? Social contract theory says that in the absence of government, everyone was fighting with each other. We were living in state of nature, and then we decided to make peace. For making peace, we said. these people certain people we selected we said that you are our leader 
you can rule over us and in return please take care of our life liberty freedom human rights and food shelter clothing okay so similarly we say that social contract is between corporations and and between individuals that we corporations should do something good for the society and in return we allow them to make profit this is called this is called as social contract theory we have a contract with the individuals we have a contract with the with the corporations okay the next theory was agency principle theory agency theory agency theory says that there is principle there is agent so principle have responsibilities agents have responsibilities they should fulfill their responsibility agent should work under the under the supervision of principal and never think that he is more important than the principal okay if he will start thinking that he is more important than the principal there will be agency problem then the next theory was stewardship theory stewardship theory says that a person should act in a way that if there is a chance to sacrifice his personal interest for the interest of the company he should do this he should think beyond his personal interest like dr jibril and then we discussed about the embeddedness theory embeddedness theory is arbitrary theory that you should have good relations with everyone use these relations time to time for the benefit of your business and finally we discussed about stakeholder theory stakeholder theory is that you should have all the stakeholders in priority means there are important stakeholders there are less important stakeholders don't ignore the less important stakeholders while you are paying attention on the important stakeholders okay so these are five theories now you are free to go thank you